quick little video here on the issue of choice. Obviously, a lot of people believe in free will. I understand that. Um, the Bible doesn't teach it. Um, and what's interesting is there are so many verses that refute free will. And what's also interesting is some of the greatest atheists, especially some of the new atheists, the militant atheists, they don't believe in free will either because they have seen both from a neuroscience perspective and uh, just from a philosophical perspective that free will does not make any sense. Well, here's one of the first philosophical arguments against free will. If God knows everything, then everything is fixed. And people say, well, no, he just knows the choices we will make. Here's how you respond to that. Does God, if God knows the choice you will make, can you choose any differently than the way God knows you will choose? Well, if you say yes, then God didn't know everything, right? Again, can we choose any differently than the way God knows we will choose? If you answer yes, then God did not know that choice. If you answer, no, we cannot choose any differently than the way God knows we will choose, then you're, you're absolutely proving the fact that we don't have free will. So is your will free to choose any differently than the way God knows you will choose? Again, there are only one of two answers. If we say yes, I can choose differently than the way God knows I will choose, then we're saying God doesn't know that particular choice and that he was wrong <laughs> about the choice that he knew that I would make. If we say no, my will is not free to choose any differently than the way God knows I will choose, then we're admitting our will is not free. Verses, Proverbs 20, verse 24, man's goings are of the Lord. How then can a man understand his own way? Um, man thinks in his heart, but the Lord directs his steps. <laughs> uh, the lot is cast into the lap. Oh, the first one was Proverbs 20, verse 24. Um, the second one, I believe, is in Proverbs 23. Anyway, check Proverbs 16, Proverbs 20, and Proverbs 23. Um Proverbs 16, verse 33 says, the lot is cast into the lap, but it's every outcome is of the Lord. It's like throwing dice, okay? They cast lots, but it says it's every outcome is of the Lord. It's, our equivalent would be throwing dice. The dice are rolled, but it's every outcome is of the Lord. If a man wins a million dollars rolling dice, it's because it's every outcome is of the Lord. Again, Proverbs 16, verse 33. Um, Proverbs, uh, Romans chapter 9, verse 16. It is not of him who wills, nor of him who runs, but of God who shows mercy. John chapter 1, verse 12 and 13. But as many as received him, to them gave he the right to become the children of God. That is, to those who believe on his name, who were born, not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but born of God. And those are just a few verses. Now, the question is, do we make choices? Absolutely, we make choices. The question is, who causes those choices? Who causes those choices? For example, um, the Bible says in Acts chapter 13, verse 48, as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. Yes, the Bible says, whoever believes in him will not perish. But the question is, who will believe in him? As many as were ordained. That's a very, very peculiar phrase there that we need to pay attention to. As many as were ordained to eternal life. Uh, Jesus says in John chapter 17, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given me. That's what Jesus said in John 17. Um, John 6, verse 37, all that the Father gives me will come to me, right? All Who will come? There's an order there. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will never cast out. 
But what's the order? All that the Father gives to me will come to me. He doesn't say everyone will come to him. He says, only those whom the Father has given. Uh, He says, as many as I love, I rebuke and chastise. He says, if you're without chastisement, then you are illegitimate. You're not God's children. So uh, that was John 6, 37, by the way. Um, And then, yet it's a command. Come to me, all you labor and are heavy laden. But he says, no man can come to me except the Father which has sent me drag him, John 6, verse 44. So yes, we make choices, but who causes those choices? God is in control of everything. If we say, well, our, you know, lots of people like to say that. God is in control of everything. Oh, yeah, God is in control, brother. Uh, really? Is he in control of everything? Oh, yes. Including your will? Uh, well, not my will. You see, people are very quick to say God is in control of everything. God's got this. And I agree. He's got this, including our will. Now, what about the bad things we do? God never in the scripture tells us that he wants to operate our lives based upon what we think his sovereign decree is. Yes, do we look back on our lives and say God was in control of everything, even our bad decisions? Yes, we do. But he never says operate your life based upon what you think God's sovereign decree is. Never, never, never. Uh, That is a horrible philosophy, dangerous philosophy. But do we look on all things as from God's decree? Absolutely. For example, Joseph's brothers, they sold him into slavery. They did not love him. They hated him. They sold him into slavery. And then they went through a period of starvation. Well, they came up to Egypt where Joseph had risen to power. They didn't know who Joseph was, but he recognized them. They were looking for food. They had gone through a famine. And they were coming down to Egypt to, uh, to, to find food. And so Joseph finally reveals to them who he is. And they were just shocked and saddened and grieved and worried that he was going to kill them. And he said, hey, hey, don't worry about it. What you meant for evil, God meant for good. So with every evil thing that happens, yes, God has planned it. God causes it. But with God, the end justifies the means. So God, in all his glory, and it's so wonderful because he's just that sovereign, he is able to use evil for good. And that's what makes Romans 8 verse 28 come alive. And we know that all things work together for good. The Bible says, and we know that God causes all things to work together for good. Key word, caused. He causes all things to work together for good. He caused Joseph's brothers to sell him into slavery so that he would feed them later. (laughs) He used their evil. And how gracious a God is that? That he would use their evil to feed them in the time of famine. Well, think about the crucifixion of Jesus. The Bible says God caught, Acts chapter 4, verse 27 and 28. The Bible says God gathered Pilate, Herod, the Jews, and the Gentiles together against the Lord's anointed, the Lord's Christ, to do whatever his hand and determinate counsel had, had before prepared to be done, right? One, one actually says that he had, I think it's New, New American Standard Bible says that he predestined them and caused them. That's what it says. He predestined them and caused them to crucify Jesus, the greatest criminal act in the history of humanity. Why? Without him causing them to crucify Jesus, we would never have eternal life. So, yes. Was it a sin to crucify Christ? Of course. Exodus, uh, I think it's 22, says, or 23 says, an innocent man you shall not slay. Christ was the innocent holy lamb of God. And he caused Pilate, Herod, the Jews, and the Gentiles to crucify Christ, to come against him, his determined predestined counsel, and his hand caused them to do it. Why? So that you would have eternal life. Be thankful that God is absolutely sovereign, yet we operate based upon what we know of his revealed commands, and that is love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself.